So we yeah. uh, we ready to move to the NFC West? Yep. NFC West, here we go. Let's do it. We are starting off with the Seattle Seahawks. 12-4 and four last season. And, of course, there was all of the rumblings going on about Russell Wilson, what's going to happen with him and Pete Carroll. Uh, this team has moved on from the Legion of Boom over to a much more uh, offensive-minded team, I guess you could say. They got rid of Shoddy. Everything's good there, I, I think, I hope, unless it's Pete Carroll's decision to run the ball more. I, I don't know. But uh, but the Seahawks obviously did pretty well last year, 12-4, and four, won the division. Uh, they only had three picks in this year's draft. Their needs, per the online uh, constituency, was offensive tackle, cornerback, defensive tackle, center, and wide receiver. They had three picks, and they had them in the second, fourth, and sixth rounds. They took wide receiver Dwayne Eskridge out of Western Michigan with their second-round pick. Fourth round, they took cornerback Trey Brown out of Oklahoma. And offensive tackle in the sixth round, Stone Forsyth out of Florida. I don't hate this at all. The only thing that I don't like is the the lack of picks, right? They, they did sure. nothing to try and take a few more bites at the apple, as as we have said. But, you know, Trey Brown, while he's undersized, he, he has obviously put up big performances. Uh, Dwayne Eskridge from Western Michigan, like this is a, a bit of a reach, but he's a he's a kid that absolutely produced uh, in in the MAC and in Stone Force. I mean, that's a that's a flyer kind of guy. Like I'm, yeah. I'm totally fine with this. I, I think it was okay for what they had. They they utilized their picks to the best of their ability, in my opinion. They just didn't have a lot of them. Right. And, and if I told you, okay, so they didn't have a first round pick, so I throw Jamal Adams in there, and then they didn't have a third round pick. Uh, cause that was also for Jamal Adams. So you get a Jamal Adams player for a first and a third. I'm not going to argue with that. The dude's an absolute beast. What nine and a half sacks, the third most ever for a defensive back. And I mean, he's the modern day Ronnie lot. He really is. And then you look, they traded their fifth round pick for a pro bowl guard and Gabe Jackson. Love that. If you told me a team's drafting Carlos Dunlap in the seventh round, who had five and a half sacks in eight games, I'm going to be like, you just got the steal of the draft. So even though they didn't have a ton of picks, what they got for their picks makes their team exponentially better. So it's it's hard to grade the actual picks. Dwayne Eskridge, everything I read about this guy, he's just an all-purpose guy. He can return kicks, catch it out of the slot. He's going to be another Tyler Lockett-type player for Russell Wilson, which is perfect because the dude is, again, going to be running for his life. His offensive line's not good there. We know that for a fact. He's going to be running for his life. And, you know, a quarterback's best friend's one of these quick little guys who can run these short routes and turn nothing into something. So I do like the pick there. Trey Brown, everything I've read about him out of Oklahoma, fantastic young corner. That Seattle secondary was abysmal the first half of the year. They definitely got better the second half of the year once Adams came back from that shoulder injury, et cetera. Uh, it's hard to rate it because it's three picks, but what they got for their draft picks, I think were quality, quality players. So overall, I give Seattle a passing grade. I like what they did with their picks. I like the impact players they got. And uh, it's hard to argue against Jamal Adams, Carlos Dunlap, and Gabe Jackson for your draft picks, in my opinion. So yeah, I like what Seattle did, and I think they'll be a little bit better next year despite Russell Wilson's whining and pouting. By the way, my probably my least favorite player in the NFL <laughs> is Russell Wilson. This is you, you remember you remember the, the that that movie uh, draft day where none of the kids went to the twenty first birthday. You know why that was in the movie? Because that actually happened to Russell Wilson. He's a faker. <laughs> he's a joker. The holy water on the sidelines to hear a concussion. Get the hell out of here. You, you were Stay trying a to virgin get till the I Seahawks marry. Fans. Like what the hell is this nineteen twelve? Like get the <laughs> hell out of here, Russell Wilson. He bugs the living crap out of me. But Seattle's going to be better next year, and I, I do kind of like what they did with this draft. You're trying to get the Seahawks fans fired up at us. I know what. You you're doing mm -hmm. yeah you're being mm -hmm. the antagonist i know and i get it but i'm a 49er fan how, you, uh, how can you not enjoy mr unlimited oh no, no i can't do that <laughs> i can't i can't do i can't do the mr unlimited thing and jump I on in here chris tell, no. tell me what you think it. all right so we're going to disagree <laughs> on this draft i think this is one of the worst drafts in the nfl out of, out of a whole out of all the thing Ooh. i think they did a bad job a because when you give up Three draft picks for one player, while I love that player, I, I don't get to just immediately slot that player in for your first-round pick because right. it costs them two first-round picks and yeah. a third-round pick. So that, that, I'm, not, I'm not giving them credit for Jamal Adams there. Okay. Um, their only pick, first-round pick, or the first pick that they had in the second round, I think they took a wide receiver. I think there were better wide receivers that went behind this kid, much better. You want to talk about a guy, a team that could have picked up speed, my Cleveland Browns drafted Anthony Schwartz. I'm going to tell you this, that's who Russell Wilson needed right there. If you put yeah. 
Skinny Schwartz next to Monster DK. You, there's nobody that can guard that. All right. You got the two fastest guys in the NFL at that moment in time, and nobody's covering you. I, I just think they missed on their wide receiver pick. I, 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 you know, I'm not a fan. Trey Brown, I don't know enough about Trey Brown, but I know this every time Oklahoma played a good offense, they gave up points. <laughs> they gave up a lot of points. And so right. I have to assume that Trey Brown wasn't locking down one side and they were just picking on the other side. I have to assume that against LSU when they gave up like 19 touchdowns the playoff year before, <laughs> that Trey Brown was getting dusted right and left. These are NFL guys, okay? I understand yeah. that not a lot of NFL wide receivers came out of the Big 12, and so last year you might have looked really good, all right? But when you played against other NFL wide receivers, which is what you're going to have to do in the league, you didn't look great. So I'm not a fan of that pick either. Stone Foresight, okay, he took an offensive lineman from Florida, probably not a bad pick. He's a six-round yeah. pick. He might make the roster. He might help the team. I don't know. Um, that's a flyer. I'm not going to knock that pick. But the other two, you don't get credit for. I think they were bad picks because the wide receiver, there's no matter how good he can be. But Seth Williams and Anthony Schwartz went behind him. Seth Williams went way, 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 way behind him. Going to be light years better than this guy. I love that. I love bagging the Seahawks. I love anything <laughs> bad about the Seahawks. So that makes me You took very, a kid that's 5'9", and you got a 6'1", and 6'2", guy behind him. And both yeah. of those guys are unbelievably much faster. So, there you go. Yeah, screw the, yeah, screw the Seahawks. You're right. Their draft sucked. You're right. Their draft Seahawks suck. suck. The Los Angeles Rams are next up. They went 10-6 and six last year. They got rid of Jared Goff. They brought in Matt Stafford. I think that helps uh, helps them win the draft regardless, even though it's not a draft, yes. whatever. Uh, I do think they will be substantially better with Matt Stafford at quarterback, especially running Sean McVay's offense. I think teams are starting to kind of catch up to what they're doing. The defense has helped them win a lot of games here, obviously to Aaron Donald and that whole bunch. Uh, not Donald, uh, Aaron Donald, excuse me, Sam and Aaron, whatever. Uh but, they, yeah, they went 10-6 and six last year, and, and they still had some holes that they need to fill, obviously. Linebacker, center, edge rusher, tackle, and cornerback. So, a lot of interior guys, and they needed help with their defensive backs. Um, and I think they did okay on this. Uh, the, the Rams did not have a first-round pick, obviously. Gave it up for Matt Stafford. But they went with round two, wide receiver Tutu Atwell out of Louisville, who measured in at less than 150 pounds. Uh, it kind of shows you, <laughs> kind of shows you how the NFL is changing. Um, linebacker yeah. Ernest Jones out of South Carolina in the third round. He is a dude. Uh, interior defensive lineman Bobby Brown the third out of A and M in the fourth round. Also fourth round quarterback Robert Rochelle out of Central Arkansas. Wide receiver Jacob Harris out of UCF in the fourth round. They got Ernest Brown the fourth out of Northwestern in the fifth. An edge rusher and running back Jake Funk out of Maryland in the seventh round. Take a flyer on a kid that can fly. I'm. I'm okay with all of this. I, I don't see uh, anything that was drastically, you know, a reach or anything like that. I think that they spotted some diamonds in we the have rough. two more picks. What two more picks? They 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 picked Ben. I, I'm not going to try. Oh, Skowronek. Yeah. Ben oh, I didn't Scal see that. He's the wide receiver from Notre Dame that got drafted. Oh, I'm looking and at Chris the, uh, Garrett from uh, – Concordia St. Paul. Yeah. Concordia St. Paul is the edge rusher. Where, what the where hell are is you guys that? Looking? I don't even know don't, what the hell that. I, I don't know what school that is. That is <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would have been surprised. Low tuition there. It's low they tuition play, at Concordia St. Paul. <laughs> yeah, lots of lacrosse and hockey at Concordia St. Paul. Great See. luge team I've heard as well at Concordia St. Paul. But no, the draft is okay. And I think this first round pick they lost this year was part of the Jalen Ramsey deal. I think the next yeah. four or five yeah. that they're not going to have is Matthew Stafford. But whatever. I, if they didn't have a single draft pick and their only draft story was we got rid of Jared Bleeping Goff, good on you. You get an A+. plus Because Jared Goff is absolutely terrible and we all know that. So they massively, massively upgraded their cornerback spot. I think this draft was pretty good. They did address some needs. I, I was doing a little bit of research on this Robert Rochelle. Apparently, the dude's a ball hawk. Five or six picks last year. He just played at a smaller school, right? Central Arkansas. I don't know damn thing about Central Arkansas. I couldn't tell you a single player on their team. But uh, this kid looks like he's going to be. Oh, so you know probably yep. much more than I do about it and probably a lot about Robert Rochelle here. And it looks like the kid's a pretty good uh, player. And especially in that scheme when you're going to, you're going to obviously, you're going to have a pass rush with Aaron Darnold. Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. They sort of started moving him around a little bit last year from the outside into the slot. 
teams are going to be throwing your direction when Jalen Ramsey's on the other side. So if this kid's able to attack the ball, I think he's in a good spot here. I think they drafted players that fit their scheme. So I think the Rams did a good job without having the first round pick. Who's going to argue about getting rid of Goff and of course, acquiring the best defensive back in the entire league in Jalen Ramsey. So I think overall success for the Rams and look, they're probably right now the team to beat in the NFC next year. Yeah, I, I, I like what the Rams did, and uh, I, I think their team definitely got better. And mm-hmm. it was a thing where none of these guys stand out as an absolute home run or a stud, but it's right. just a combination of they took a lot of bites at the apple, they filled a lot of their needs, this is an organization that I trust, and and they took they took a lot of guys that, that had, had pretty good pedigree and uh, and or developed into a pretty good talent. So I would have liked more offensive linemen. They they could use some offensive line help, and I'm surprised they didn't at least look. If you're going to take some seventh round flyer on, I mean, I feel pretty confident in saying that Ben Skowronek is not ever going to make a Pro Bowl. I just feel really good about <laughs> that. Uh, why not try to get some line depth because they certainly need it there. And Matthew Stafford. He's not the most mobile guy. You need to protect him, but the uh, Rams are in good shape. And overall, I think it's a su- successful draft. I think so yeah. as well. Uh, we will move on to the Arizona Cardinals, and I'm looking at a different site now, so I'm actually going to be able to spout off all of the seventh-round picks. Uh, moving, <laughs> moving away from the PFF uh, draft board and whatnot, so uh, because for whatever reason they did not last those or they did not list those last two picks. That's weird. Uh, very I'd rather strange. you pronounce that guy's name than. Well, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> even try. I just said I'm. Not I don't know why I tried. I'm terrible at names. That's, I ruin them no, every single day. That's how worst. I would have done it. That is how I would have done it. So uh, let's talk about the Arizona Cardinals. Went eight and eight last year. Uh, pretty successful first year for Kyler Murray and whatnot, or uh, whichever year for Kyler Murray. And things went well, I think, last year. Um, you know, eight and eight, pretty good. That's uh, that's about the same kind of record that Cliff Kingsbury used to have at Texas Tech. So, you know, I, I think it's a step <laughs> in the right direction. Um, I like what they did in the draft here. You know, they their needs were cornerback, wide receiver, um, running back, tackle, and tight end. And you know, we'll roll through the list here. First round, they take Zayvon Collins, linebacker out of Tulsa. I kind of really like that pick. He yeah, was too. a culture setter at Tulsa. He changed the way that they play football in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, I always like that. Rondell Moore, wide receiver out of Purdue. It, look, you give Kyler Murray some more weapons, you give him Rondell Moore, I mean, I am all over that. Yeah. Cornerback in the third round, Marco Wilson out of Florida. Uh, that was a good pick. Marco Wilson played really well for the Gators this year. Victor Dumukije out of Duke, an edge rusher. Um, you know, okay, he, he's not Chris Rumpf, but um, obviously Rumpf was off the board. And this guy was okay. You know, I, I remember watching him play multiple games in the ACC this year. Tay Gowan, cornerback out of UCF in the sixth round. They got James Wiggins, a safety out of Cincinnati in the seventh round. Good guy to take a flyer on. He was a leader on that team last year. And Michael Minette, uh, center out of Penn State. Uh, you need some offensive line help. Go and get a center out of Penn State, a guy that can hold up. Uh, I I like what they did. I think this is a win for their draft. Um, I like the, the strategy here I can actually see. And, and it looks like they are, you know, they want their defense to be good. Okay, you know, they don't have to be great on defense. They want to score points, and they are going to yeah. get dudes that can do it. I, I like what they're doing here. Yep, I, li- I love everything that Arizona did. And let's not forget the fourth-round pick uh, that they would have been theirs this year went to that DeAndre Hopkins trade. So I think you can just go ahead and plug in DeAndre Hopkins in the fourth round. I think everyone <laughs> would say that's a win. I'm breaking Chris's rule, but that is def- – and it's not like they gave up multiple picks. They robbed Bill o- the baby dropper himself, Bill O'Brien. I mean, would they give up David Johnson in a fourth-round pick or something? Yep. And like a box of Wheaties for DeAndre Hopkins. And then the third-round pick they didn't have, they traded for Rodney Hudson, who's certainly going to bolster – that offensive line, this team should have been a playoff team last year. If it wasn't, Kyler Murray got hurt. He had that shoulder issue, and he still tried to play through it. And it just – their offense couldn't get going. They had some bad performances against the Giants, et cetera. So that probably cost them a slot in the playoffs last year. This is a team on the rise. I know some people were saying it's a reach for Zayvon Collins. I disagree. I agree with you guys. That kid looks like an absolute beast. The one thing I will say, the Cardinals are going to be a little thin in the defensive backfield, and they were last year. Patrick Peterson wasn't the same player. Obviously, he heads off to Minnesota. I would have liked to see a little bit more there. Teams are going to be able to throw the ball at will against this team. 
But if they can put a pass rush up and they've got the players and we know they added J.J. Watt, which, I mean, whatever. I don't know how much you're going to get out of J.J. Watt. Probably not all that much. But I like what the Cardinals did here. I think this was a successful draft. And Rondale Moore, Zayvon Collins, these are two uh, another team who knocked their first two picks out of the park. Then you plug in that third rounder. They trade for Hudson. So you get Rodney Hudson, a, one of the top five guards in the league, with that third round pick. DeAndre Hopkins part, deal for the fourth round. Cardinals hit it out of the park. Love what Arizona did. So here's my problem. So I'm, I completely agree with everything you said. I, I I like what they did. I I think Rondell Moore is an unbelievable player, and he's gonna kind of help that offense a whole lot because he's so versatile. He can do a lot of things. He's a freak athlete. Loves Aylen Collins. Gary and I actually watch Tulsa because we watch the American Conference. Listen, right. I am a firm believer. I do not believe in this Power Five G Five bullshit. Okay, I think that is propaganda by the big boys. All right, Gary's Alabama football team likes to keep the little guys in their place, but the American True. Conference is head and shoulders better than the Pac twelve, and they're right there equal to the uh, the Big Twelve. And it's not, and they're probably head to head with the. Um, ACC, ACC except for Clemson. outside of Clemson, and that's the list. Everybody else, the, I would take the American over over the ACC from top to bottom. All right, and and this is the issue: is nobody gives them the respect because they see that little G five and they don't think they're as good. Tulsa's a good football team that played other really good football teams, and they beat them up. All right, they physically manhandled a lot of really good teams this year, and and Zaylen Collins was a part of that. Gary talks about he's a culture setter. Yeah. He changed the culture because Tulsa used to be an all offensive, throw the ball a million times, don't stop anybody team. He was one of the guys brought in, recruited to change that team around to to kind of a defensive minded first team. Um, I think he can be a help here. Here's the problem. Here's the caveat to all of this. Okay. I do not think you can be a mediocre ass coach in college football and then get promoted to the pros and all of a sudden magically become good at football coaching. Okay. I don't think that's a possibility. I think that pretty boy on the sidelines is going to get put in a phone booth and the hell beat out of him by every coach that stands on the other side of him every Sunday. All right. His offenses are pretty, they're flashy, but that's all they are. They're all flashed and popping stance. Okay. That's it. That there's, there's no substance to them whatsoever. And, and I just think that, that at some point in time, the league is going to realize Cliff Kingsbury was a mediocre coach in college. You don't get to go from college to the pros and all of a sudden become a good football coach. That's not how this game is. It's way too competitive. The men that work on the other side work way too hard. They're, they're just better than him. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Cliff Kingsbury, <laughs> let's put Chris's number up on the screen for Cliff Kingsbury to go ahead and give uh, Chris a phone call here. Call me don't forget to Call me anytime. <laughs> Call me anytime. I don't. I just I don't it. know how you do it. I don't know how yeah. you you couldn't match wits with big game, big game Bob at Oklahoma. Oh but you God, think you yeah. can match wits with Kyle Shanahan? And, no chance. And, 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 are you insane? Are, are, am I taking crazy pills? No, you just can't do that. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think he's got a lot more help at Arizona than he did at Texas Tech. At, I don't give a damn. It doesn't you know? matter. At some point in time, coaches got to coach in, in the pros. Good Lord. All Love right, it. moving on. Last team of the day. This would be Kyle's San Francisco 49ers. The, uh, look, the Super Bowl runner-up from a couple of years ago went 6-10 and 10 last year. They had injuries that just decimated the team. Uh, could yeah. not get over the hump. They played valiantly in multiple games, even with a bunch of dudes out. Uh, the lines were decimated. The quarterback position had all kinds of issues all year, and they traded a bunch of picks and they traded a bunch of dudes to move up and go shore up that quarterback position to make sure if Jimmy G is going to be hurt, but well, we're going to be fine because we're about to develop the next superstar. Uh, and maybe that's what they got. I don't know that I necessarily agree with trading up that much, but we shall see. Yeah. Their uh, their needs were cornerback, edge, center, and defensive tackle. Here's what they did. First round, pick number three, Trey Lance. Obviously, they moved way up and gave up a lot of assets to be able to go and get him. He's the quarterback from North Dakota State. Uh, the fewest passes thrown in a career by a top five quarterback since the 1960s. He's only thrown yeah. like 330-something passes. Um, who knows what you're going to get? You know, I, I, I see all the tools. I see, you know, they talk about the intangibles and all that. We've only seen it for one season. 
Um, and and yeah. even with North Dakota State, you know, they played in a national championship game. They beat James Madison 28-20, to 20, uh, you know, a couple of years ago now, 2019. And, and he only threw the ball 11 times. Now, when you only have <laughs> to throw the ball 11 times to win, that's good. It also lets me know, eh, Okay, like was it was it the quarterback or was it something else? I mean, he had twenty eight touchdowns, zero picks. Um, but either way, we'll move on from Trey Lance. Obviously, I'll let Kyle and Chris jump in on him. Round two, oh, man. they get Aaron Banks, guard out of Notre Dame. I think that's a fantastic pick. Um, and Kyle Shanahan knows this. I think most smart people around this league know you're going to go get an offensive lineman. Go get somebody from Notre Dame. Like very simple. Yep. Uh, round three, Trey Sermon, running back out of Ohio State. Thought that was a fantastic pick. Uh, we all know the zone run scheme that Kyle Shanahan does. Trey Sermon's going to fit right in there. Ambry Thomas in the third round, cornerback out of Michigan. Kind of like that. That was their uh, compensatory pick. Um, Jalen Moore, offensive tackle out of Western Michigan in the fifth round. Dia, uh, Dia Madre, Dia Madore, whatever. Lin, Linar, <laughs> Linwar, quarterback out of Oregon. I've watched him play. I can never say his name. I have no idea how you pronounce this. But, uh, but the quarterback out of Oregon can – can play. He can fly. Like he's yeah. sometimes he's in the wrong position. This is kind of like that Andre Cisco thing. Uh, I I think he's kind of boomer bust, right? And if you can somehow teach him to not be in the wrong spot all the time, then uh, then you got a guy. So Talanua uh, Hufanga, safety out of USC. Man, they are they are taking these West Coast things to heart. I'm telling you. Fifth <laughs> round and sixth round, Eli Mitchell running back out of Louisiana Lafayette. The Ragin' Cajuns and Billy Napier's offense kind of ran, you know, the same way that he ran uh, pretty much all season uh, and has been that way for the last three years. I, I think overall, you know, a, a winning a winning draft, I think. Uh, there were some things I didn't like. It's not, you know, if we had to give letter grades, this wouldn't be my highest one. But, uh, but I think that the picks were successful. I think they did okay here. Yeah, so I'm really torn about this, and that's why I needed your guys' breakdown on some of these players because I love my 49ers, and I'm done with Jimmy Garoppolo. Just completely over this guy, not because he doesn't have ability, but he cannot stay healthy. So It's, his, it's not his ability. His, it's his availability. It's yes. his availability. Absolutely right. So, first of all, I think it's a win because they did not overdraft Mac Jones. Because why in the hell would you try to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo by drafting essentially the same exact guy, but maybe a little healthier? Trey Lance, though, man, that's a big question mark. And look, maybe later in this draft, like, Sermon's going to fit right in. Of course, Tevin Coleman's gone. Raheem Mostert, we know he has durability issues as well. And even when he's fully healthy, Kyle Shanahan moves those running backs in and out. Raheem Mostert, even when he's the bell cow of the offense is only playing about 52 percent of the snaps when that happens so hopefully this Trey Sermon kid is good I'm glad you guys told me that you think he's good because I don't know much about him and I every I, you know Mel Kuyper who's I think Mel Kuyper's a real asshole and I don't really like Mel Kuyper's analysis I just got to tell you I can't stand that guy but he's telling me they reached for everything here but I do think they address needs. I love getting an offensive lineman out of Notre Dame you're absolutely right and we need to figure out a way to keep Jimmy Garoppolo upright because Trey Lance is not ready to play like that. When you draft that high and the player is not really expected to, or nor do you really want him helping your team next year. It's hard for me to say it's a great draft. And let's not forget from, I believe it's from 2009 till 2016, every quarterback drafted in the top five of the draft is no longer with the team that drafted them. So that just tells you right there, this is a risky little game you're playing with a guy who threw something you're at like 331 passes and had one outstanding year. I get it, but it's going to take a while for this kid to get ready. So it's really hard for me to say the only thing I was happy about is it wasn't Mac Jones. That was it. I didn't want Mac Jones. I didn't want Mac Jones. I didn't want Mac Jones. Screw Alabama. Screw that team. That's right, Gary. <laughs> Tired of Alabama kicking the crap out. Just hey, ridiculous. Tell, tell me oh, this. Alabama. Tell me this. If, if they had not traded up to number three, if they had stuck firm at number 12, how would you have felt about Mac Jones at 12? I would have felt much, much better about that. You, you just go. can't give up all the assets you, you gave can't up give to up bring two in. first round picks for it. I agree. No, you just you just can't do it. And Trey Lance, I'm really iffy on it. Look, I'm glad it wasn't Mac Jones, but really, we're going to, uh, I don't know what they saw. And you're not going to hear me question Kyle Shanahan's football acumen. To me, no. he is the smartest mind in the NFL. It's, in my opinion, it's not even close. I think he's, at, well, maybe Andy Reid is right there. With them, of course, Belichick. I'm not going to disrespect Bill Belichick. Well, the, the That's Lance thing, ridiculous. What, what we haven't brought up about Trey Lance is the the thing that we saw the most from North Dakota State is he has an explosive ability to be able to run. 
Like he can, right. and he is kind of the future uh, that the quarterback position is in the NFL. Guys that can move around in the pocket, guys that can get out and get you some yardage. Uh, he takes sure. up those empty yards that you don't really see a whole lot on the stat sheet, but you know it's it's second and seven and nobody's open, and you need to go yeah. make something happen. You can go get three, four yards and make a third and manageable as opposed to whatever else. Mac Jones would have not yeah. been able to do that. Uh, but Trey exactly. Lance might be able to. So and, stuff like that I think is very I mean, important. If you looked at the quarterbacks, Trey Lance is probably the one with the most Mahomes upside, right? If you're looking for the next Patrick Mahomes, this guy you know, seems like he's got that kind of ability. It's impossible to compare him to him and really unfair to compare him to him. I would have been more comfortable if it was Fields here in the three spot. I'm not going to lie. I thought – when I watched Fields compete against elite competition, I thought he was the best quarterback in this draft just for my money, and that's who I would have been more comfortable with him taking because, look, chances are Trey Lance is going to see the field next year, unfortunately. Jimmy Garoppolo's never proven that he can stay on the field, so now we're going to be throwing this kid into the fire, and you just really hope that the injuries don't pile up because you touched on it. The 49ers had the most money on injured reserve last year, over $81 million dollars in contracts on injured reserve. It's the most ever in the history of the NFL. If the team stays healthy, the 49ers are a legit contender to win the NFC, but I don't, they didn't, their impact player, their marquee player they drafted is not going to be the reason they get there. So that's why I downgrade the draft a little bit like some of the other pieces, but way too many question marks for me to cheer on. So I just need to hear you guys tell me some good things about Ambry Thomas. We need help in the defensive backfield. I need to know he's good. Trey Sermon, I need to know he's good. Aaron Banks, I already know he's good. He's a guard out of Notre Dame. He's going to be just fine. He's going to start. and <laughs> He's going to play 15 years and probably make seven Pro Bowls. And uh, So I'm happy about that. Real 50-50. I didn't love the trade-up. I, I understand it, uh, but I didn't love it. And uh, certainly doesn't help their team total for next year, I will tell you that. So, so I, I will I will be the Trey Lance defender here. Okay, I, I actually like Trey Lance a lot. I, I watched all of the ESPN propaganda on all these quarterbacks, and he's the one that I actually bought all the sauce on. Okay, it, it is not his fault that he did not play more than one year. Okay, because right. it's not his fault that he played and COVID moved his entire football schedule to the fall uh, and to the sure. spring, and so he just wasn't able to play last year. All right. Yeah. Had he played last year with this North Dakota State team against what we saw in FCS just now, um, he would have gotten some really good competition. We would have gotten some 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 good film on him, and we'd have gotten to see him do more things. All right. So so that's that's out of his control. He went and he spent his year working out while everybody else was playing, working out with agents, working out with all of these guys that do nothing but get you ready for the NFL. Okay, so remember that he didn't spend his last year in college. He spent his last year already learning what the NFL wants him to do. So he's a little more. I'm going to. I love that information. Polished. That makes me. Feel I'm going to bet he's better. a little more polished than we think he is. Okay, Excellent. the kid's got okay. an incredible mind. He's super smart. He's able to learn the offenses way faster than all these other guys, based on the the acumen of of, of all the interviews and tests that these guys have taken um, uh, up to the draft, and. I like running quarterbacks because, A, Kyle Shanahan already has the best run game in football, right? And it's not close, by the way. Right. If you have a running quarterback, it makes it that much harder to run the ball or to stop the run. It's just right. almost impossible, right? So I think he's good. I think he's going to be able to figure out the throw. Th not figure it out. I think he can throw. I think we've seen him throw. I think we've we just haven't seen him throw a lot. Okay. All right. Who cares? Like, can he do it? I think he can. It doesn't matter. I, we'll find out on Sundays. But but I, I, he's played quarterback his entire life. I don't think there's any reason to doubt that he can't throw the football, okay? The Trey Sermon pick that you're worried about or questioned about, Trey Sermon is an absolute monster. He's an absolute monster. I think Trey Sermon's going to take this job. My my problem, so, so in like – dynasty fantasy leagues and things like that. Mm -hmm. My issue with moving up to try to get Trey Sermon in different spots is, is the fact that Kyle Shanahan is always going to run two to three running backs at a time. Yeah. You've talked yeah. about it. If, if you're the bell cow, quote unquote, you're only going to get at best. You're getting 50% of the touches, right? Exactly. That's the only argument for him. That's the only reason he is not one of the top premier, like, dynasty draft guys this year in, in football, but Trey Sermon's going to be a monster in Kyle Shanahan's offense. 
Um, so, so Today's a win for me, then. I love it. You hate the no, Seahawks, I, I and you love team, the 49ers. I I'm chilling back now. <laughs> what I didn't like, I didn't like the idea of giving up two first-round picks to move up to three because I didn't think it was necessary. I just, right. I just thought it was unnecessary completely. I do believe that had you not moved up to three, you would have been able to get Trey. Maybe you could have moved up to seven. Maybe you could have moved up to mm-hmm. whatever. But I think, I think Trey Lance would have been there. I am with you that I would have rather had Fields, by the way. I, I, I'm higher mm-hmm. on Fields than Lance. But obviously, a lot of other people aren't. Fields fail for a reason. I don't know why. I don't believe in yeah. it. I don't agree with it. But He, he holds on to the football. I'm not making these picks. Yeah. So yeah. I think they did the best job in this dra- out of this conference, out of this division. I, I trust what they did. I think their first three picks are going to be seen as home runs. I don't think it's Love close. It. I like it. All right, tomorrow we are going to hit on the AFC North, and then Thursday we are going to hit, or sorry, AFC and NFC North, and then the AFC and NFC East on Thursday. Uh, fellas, anything y'all want to toss in on it? No, I just I absolutely loved it. Thanks for making me feel better about the 49ers. And if you're watching <laughs> on my channel, don't forget, check these guys out. I love these guys. Love doing the shows. And I love ripping heaters during the show, too. It there just feels right. So what you a, what a day right. today. I appreciate you guys, man. <laughs> of course, go and check out Kyle at DFS Bachelor on YouTube. You can also find him at the exact same address on Twitter. Uh, you can find us, winningcureseverything.com and sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF sbrpicks.com slash NFL and sbrpicks.com slash MLB. Fellas, I think that's going to be it. So let's uh, let's dive out of here. All of you that watched today, thank you so much for being a part of the show. If you would, tell a friend. Of course, we would certainly appreciate that. It helps support the show. And uh, let's dive out. You guys take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all of your picks cash this week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.